Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. Here I've got the back chassis of a an all-wheel drive automower. I was going to say a 435X. It is a 435X rear chassis, but I put the plastic from a 535 on here because I want you to be able to see the difference between this piece and this piece where on the 435 this is gray as well, so it's a little bit harder to see what's what, but at any rate. We have this back chassis, we're going to take it apart, show you what's inside there, show you how to take it apart, all that good stuff. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how to get to this point where you have the rear chassis separated from the rest of the mower, we have other videos out there where we show that process, you know, how you get in there to access the nut on top of this stud right here, and uh, that's where you'd also unplug this from. Real simple to do, so you get back through and you can check some of our other videos, I believe the one where we replaced the switch cord, that has that in there. Um, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time describing all that and explaining all that. We're just going to jump into this right here. So the first thing you want to do is this piece right here, which I put the orange one on so you can see. You just want to lift up on the front of that. Just lift up on it, and that comes right off of there. There's a tab up here at either of these points, and they, these tabs slide into these slots right here. The front part here, because that would be towards the front of your mower, just held on with magnets. Real simple. So you can pull that off there and move that to the side so it doesn't get damaged. Now, in this cover part right here, your fender assembly, you have your charging contacts. You've got magnets down here. These are what tell the mower if there's a, a, a collision, you know, if it ran into something. Um, these magnets will slide back and forth over top of sensor boards that are inside this housing, which you'll see once we get this apart. And you have your snap lock caps here, that's the official term, or grommet bushing, whatever you want to call them, that snap down over the joysticks. Now the way that this comes off of here is just like any other all-wheel, or I'm sorry, any other automower that uses the snap lock caps where you're just going to pull this thing up off of the, the joysticks. Now, one thing I will warn you about is at the front, this part right here is very vulnerable to braking. As you can see, uh, you might not be able to see that because of all the dust and dirt, but this has a big crack right across there already. That's already that's already split out. Over here, it's you can see the hairline crack through there. Because when this thing's driving, it's constantly getting stuck on stuff when it backs up because this is one that we've used and abused. Um, so this part here, you want to make sure when you go to pull this up off of the, the chassis that you're not just grabbing down here and trying to yank up because this whole thing is going to break off on you. And this, is, this part right here is separate from this part right here, and who knows how long it can take to get them if you go to order them, because they're not very common parts. Uh, so I would suggest go to this, this part back here, where it says AWD, the back bumper, and start by trying to pry up from there. You can get your hands in under there, and you can, you can put your fingers up in over the chassis, and just take your thumbs and pop up on this bumper here, like that. You want to make sure you're doing that, you're not flexing against this. I was lifting up there pretty high so you guys could see it better, but once you have that off of there, then it's easier to get in here and get better leverage on this part right here where your uh, your front snap lock caps are at, your front joysticks, without hopefully breaking that the rest of the way off. You got one more to go here. There we go. So we got that up off of the up off of our joysticks. Our cable comes back through here from our from our charging plates, and that goes into this grommet right here. I'm gonna set this down here to the side. I'll try to roll this up a little bit so you can see it better. There's the grommet where the wire goes in. So we're just gonna pop that out, and you have a plug there. Very similar to the other automowers with the charging plates in the front. We'll move that to the side so hopefully we don't break it the rest of the way during this process. So now you're down to your chassis and you have your, your arm here. And um, you can't take this part off without getting this out of the way. It just won't lift up and slide past there. So you have to take this arm out. And in order to take this off, there's a... There's a screw right here, takes a four millimeter Allen wrench, and it can be a little tight because everything kind of rusts and corrodes in there. Now you can see on this, the arm has a lot of wear on it, and it'll flop front to back. I mean, it's good for it to move side to side, obviously, but 
the front to back is starting to wear on this so we want to make sure we put this back together that we get it nice and snug we don't want to break these but we want to make sure that this thing's not going to get, not going to get too loose and start screwing up some of our sensors um so that's something to keep an eye on you know when you're working on this part of it right here but at any rate we've got our allen wrench here and we're going to get that in there so we get a good grip because there's plenty of dirt in there and corrosion in there and I want to make sure you get that in there pretty far, as far as you possibly can, so that it, it bites and doesn't just strip it out. And um, this thing's going to be tight, so there's going to be some snap there because of all that, that corrosion and dirt. So. Oof, might need a little bit more persuasion on that one. Uh, well, I don't know how many small wrenches, but I got this one out already for the wheel motors. Yeah, like I said, that one might snap a little bit. There we go. At least it moved. <laughs> that thing was tight. Alright, and it's going to take... Yeah, you can hear it there. Um, it's going to take a little bit to get this thing out. And this is another one. All right, so it took a little bit more force than expected to get this thing out of there. This is actually the shoulder screw out of this arm assembly here. Had to spray a little bit of, of uh, penetrating oil on it. You can see that thing is just, it's got a lot of dirt in there. Um, it was really scuzzed up. So what I ended up having to do was I got it out there far enough when I had unthreaded it, and it was just a matter of getting the rest of the way out, that I was able to stick my needle nose pliers down here against the head of it and kind of pry back on it, use them as a wedge to, to pry out on this as I was turning with the Allen wrench, and then it just jumped a little bit and came right out. So that's out. Now this should just lift right up off of there, and we can put this with this part right here. Oh yeah, that's definitely full of dirt and debris. Um, so now we've got that out of the way. We can take our screws out and we're free to remove this chassis right here, this chassis cover. I'm gonna use a T20 Torx bit screwdriver. Alright, now when you go to take this apart, you're going to have some wires connected in there, so you don't want to just go lifting straight up on this and yanking it out of there. And you also have a warranty seal back here. This would have been uh, at the, the rear bumper. So, make sure you got everything cleaned up as good as you can on yours when you go to take it apart. Just going to get this dirt out of there. And we're going to pick up on this easy. And then underneath here, you'll see your, really hard to see. Uh, let me, I'm just gonna unplug these and then I'll show you what was what. Um, we got this cable right here. And there you go, that's a little bit easier to see. Uh, you have the, the gray cables coming down here from the magnetic sensor boards plugged into this, um, Sorry, the, the wheel motor control board, and then you had this plug right here that was plugged in uh, above that. So plug that the rest of the way. There we go. All right, we had to stop there for a minute because we had some technical difficulties, do some background interference. But uh, the top cover here of our automower, when you pull this off, you've got three magnetic sensor boards in here. As I said, in the body. You have, you have your magnets out here on the sides, and these magnets are going to, they're going to move past these boards. The magnet is going to know whether, I'm sorry, the board is going to know whether the magnet is directly over top of it or not. Anytime that the magnet moves side to side, front to back, the sensor board is going to know it and tell the mower, hey, we got something going on. There's a collision or um, something just hit us from the side or whatever. So if you have this sitting on here, this would be the front of the mower coming out this way. You're probably saying, well, what's this third board for? This one here, a lot of people don't realize that that's in there because this is the one that lines the back of the mower up at the front of the mower. 
So we have this sitting here, just like that. Like I said, the front of the mower is out here. You might be saying, well, where's the magnet at then? Because we know these other ones are out here in the body. Third one, the one in the middle, is here in this arm, at the bottom of this arm. That's it right there. So that's why this has these slots cut into it, because this is indexed. In the spine of the mower, where this fits up through that hole, it's tapered, but it also has a key in there, kind of like a flywheel, to line up with one of these grooves. When these grooves are lined up with that key, it puts this thing straight in line with the spine of the mower. So this is lined up, that means this magnet is going this way. So from where these slots are at, it's 180 degrees off, that magnet. With this mounted in there and everything lined up, that magnet is going straight across. Anytime that the back end of this mower or the front of this mower move, and this is rotated, that rotates that magnet across that sensor board telling it, hey, something just happened, something just moved. Now, this, this shaft right here, like I said, is going to be fastened into the spine of the mower. So it's going to move with the front of the mower. So anytime the front of the mower moves, your magnet's going to move. Anytime the back end of the mower moves, this, like I said, is with the spine of the mower. So when the back end of the mower moves, the sensor board is moving, not the magnet. That's how it's going to know, hey, this back end here is 15 degrees off from the front of the mower. The front of the mower is going around a corner. It's, you know, 35 degrees off from us now. We need to catch up, and that's what's going to line all this up. If you take all this apart, you're going to have to put this back together and then use the auto check program to recalibrate all of this to make sure that everything is saying, yes, we are in line. Otherwise, when you put all, put all this stuff back together, it could end up where you have your back end is going like this and the front of the mower is going like this and they just keep fighting each other and going around in circles. I know many of you out there have seen that because either you did it or your dealer did it. And when they put it back together, they didn't go to, into auto check and do a post assembly calibration. You should do that whenever you replace any of these boards, really, in one of these all wheel drives, but especially the magnetic sensor boards or any of the components with magnets in them. Speaking of those boards, you will also have to use auto check to update the wheel motor control board, which is right here. And you'll have to calibrate your loop sensor board back here as well. So you got loop sensor board. This is different than the one in the front of the mower. It's just slightly narrower. So one from the front will not fit back here because it'd be too wide. Wheel motor control board, the exact same one that's used in the front of the all-wheel drive mower. Your wheel motors, these are the same used in your 450X, your 430X, your 550, your 520. These are the larger ones. The wheels themselves, the, the drive wheels for the back chassis, these are the same that are used on the 310, 315, and 315X model uh, automowers. So you do have some options there if you want to put some other ones on. Uh, what else we got here? This cable and this cable right here, this multicolored one that plugs into your um, wheel motor control board, they are coming from the battery. Your battery is underneath here. We have a whole video showing how to take that out, how to replace that and everything. That's a pretty obvious one, but um, that's it for inside here. You have that, that wheel motor control board, your loop sensor board, your two wheel motors, and in the top you have your magnetic sensors. And that's it for the internals, the important stuff there. Now you do have the joysticks out here, and they're going to be the same as like the ones used on the front. Um, rear chassis seal, obviously you want to replace that anytime you put it back together. When you are putting this back together, you saw me have to fight with this thing. You want to make sure that thing's cleaned up. Maybe put some grease on there so that that can, that can uh, move a little bit freely. A little bit more freely, I should say. Now you do want to watch. This one here has some pretty excessive play in it, even with the, the shoulder bolt in there. Um, once that gets to be too much, you could have some problems with that magnet lining up correctly with the with that magnetic sensor board underneath there. So something to keep an eye on if you have those constant problems or the thing's just not lining up properly when you put it back together. You know, you see where it's always just a little bit off the back end from the front end. It could be from this right here or starting to wear a bit or just maybe it needs a, a recalibration. Take it to your dealer, get them to check it out, recalibrate all that stuff. Uh, put this back on there quick. 
I'll show you this here. Another thing to pay attention to are these charging contacts. This is a different assembly than what you'll find on your 450 and 430X because this cable is a lot longer. So you can't get the one for the 430X and the 450X and think it's going to work on your 435X. Uh, snap lock caps, they're the same as all the other mowers use. Uh, any mowers that use the snap lock caps, they're using these same ones. And your magnets in there, like I said, they're going to slide over top of those boards. Same magnets that are used in the front of the all-wheel drive auto mower. <clears throat> Uh, the back bumper here, you see the screws, obviously that's interchangeable. The front bumper, two screws there, that's interchangeable as well. And um, this top cover, like I said, this is the orange one from a 535. You can also get this in, in white or the standard gray for a 435X. And obviously because those are the same wheel motors used in there uh, as in the other 400 series mowers, same same nut out here, same washer, all that stuff, even though these are the smaller diameter wheels. And that's going to do it. That's that's it right there. That's all your stuff that you you need to know for your, your rear chassis uh, of your all-wheel drive auto mower. I should point out this, this cable right here, that's the one coming out the top, and then this one here for your, for your magnetic sensor boards, they plug into the, the last two spots right here on this. Uh, wheel motor control board and they re re relay everything up to the front of the mower through this this cable right here that plugs in at the top of the, the spine of the mower so um, oh yeah one more thing the uh, the uh, magnetic sensor boards in here these three all three of them are the same and the two in the front of the all-wheel drive auto mower are the same as this so you could you can move them around uh if it's saying you have one that's bad you can move them around to try to figure out which one it is it's bad or if you need to rob one out of another auto mower they're all the same so you don't have to worry about one being specific for outside inside front back anything like that uh, if you need parts for your auto mower if you have questions about auto mowers you're looking for technical support you're looking to buy an auto mower place to start is our website www.roboticmowerservices.com if you can't find the parts, the accessories, or the information you're looking for on our website, there's plenty of ways on the website to contact us, or you can send an email to roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. Be sure to give us the model and a serial number and a good description of what it is you're looking for or what the problem is you're having with your mower. We will do the best we can to get back to you in a timely manner and help you get everything figured out. Um, you know, help you find the parts you need or the technical support you need, whatever we can do to try to help you out as quickly as possible. Um, bear with us because we are pretty busy a lot of a lot of the months out of the year now, so it <laughs> could take a little bit more than just an hour to get back to you. But that's how you can go about your process of fixing your auto mower, buying an auto mower, um, buying parts for your auto mower, www.roboticmowerservices.com or send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com if you don't find what you're looking for on our website. That's going to do it for this video here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, and thanks for watching.